some people have called this book a second edition, which uh, isn't what it really is. This is like a volume two. And so both books, and it's co completely coincidental, contain 14 chapters on performance best practices or tips or techniques. And so the, there's no overlap between the 14 techniques in the first book and the 14 techniques in this book. So really, you should read and apply the techniques in, the, in that order. The first book talks more about uh, networking and, and how to reduce the number of HTTP requests and reduce the uh, transfer size of, of responses. And so I think that at least looking at the most popular websites uh, in the world, we're seeing a, a adoption of those techniques. So I think that those uh, uh, best practices are gaining traction. And what's happened in the two or three years since I researched and wrote that book is Web 2.0 is has exploded, right? So now websites have all of this JavaScript and all this dynamic behavior, and it's really different. And so it totally makes sense that there's a different set of techniques or best practices for making these Web 2.0 dynamic websites very fast. And so that's what this book really takes on. There are still some uh, tips about you know, with backend scaling and network optimizations, but half the book is about JavaScript optimizations because that's really, you know, JavaScript is very painful for browsers to deal with, and JavaScript is the future of the web. So we need to focus in that area, especially when it comes to performance. The book is targeted most to uh, front end engineers, but even uh, anyone working on web applications will benefit from it. It talks about um, the impact of different you know, uh, network protocols, uh, HTTP spec, uh, persistent connections, keep alive, pipelining, how all of those can affect website performance. So I'd say it's primarily targeted to um, front-end web developers, but actually anyone working on a web application, uh, I think will benefit from the book and find it interesting.